Hi, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you're all doing well. I am here today with a book review on The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. I actually have the last flight up there on my TBR shelf that I have uh, never read. And I've probably had it for, actually no, a friend did gift it to me um, in December. So I've had it literally up there for half a year and I heard it's amazing. Um, I did choose this because I have vowed to read the thrillers that Book of the Month um, puts out for the year. If you are unfamiliar with Book of the Month, it is a book buying subscription where you can get one hardcover book uh, for $14.99 and then you can choose two up to two more books for $10 each that are also hardcovers. So I did choose The Lies I Tell and I also chose The Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier, which I actually have a full um, review and also a read with me. I'll link that up here with you but if you have this book um it's almost like we read it together is like the style of that kind of video or if you've already read it uh you can see my thoughts as i'm like live reading it um i did want to do a read with me for the lies i tell but i ended up doing like a um group buddy read for this um from Instagram. Um, it's just the same handle. I'll put a little sticker or something here. And I ended up reading this with, I think, four other friends. Um, and I'm also currently doing a buddy read for Sundial by Katarina Ward. And it was just like too much because it's also the week of my son's first birthday. So I was like, okay, it was just too much to like also do a read with me for this one. But don't worry, I do have the non-spoiler review for you here. You know, just like when you overcommit to something, that's what I did that week. I was like, I'm going to film, film another read with me. I'm going to do a buddy read. I'm going to do a second buddy read. And then I was like, wait, girl, you're planning a first birthday. So anyways, like I said, I chose these for my June book of the month picks. And this is actually a pretty quick read. Um, I would say it's pretty gripping from the beginning. Um, it's under 300 pages. I am going to go ahead and read the synopsis so just skip a, like 30 seconds ahead or so if you don't want to know what the book is about like you just want to go into it knowing nothing it says she's back meg williams maggie littleton melody wild different names for the same person depending on the town and depending on the job she's a con artist who erases herself to become whoever you need her to be a college student a life coach a real estate agent but nothing about her is real she slides alongside you and tells you exactly what you want to hear. And by the time she's done, you've likely lost everything. Kat Roberts has been waiting 10 years for the woman who upended her life to return. And now that she has, Kat is determined to be the one to expose her. But as the two women grow closer, Kat's long held assumptions begin to crumble, leaving Kat to wonder who Meg's true target is. The Lies I Tell is a twisted domestic thriller that dives deep into the psyches and motivations of two women and their unwavering quest to seek justice for the past and rewrite the future. That being said, I would say I was gripped from the very beginning. Um, I read this book in four parts, um, which I will do like a book talk for those of us who have read in this video. Um, but since this is still a non-spoiler section, um, by the way, I'll link that book talk time stamp in the description box for you if you want to skip ahead. Um, but I would say I was pretty hooked like in the very beginning. I loved both of the girls' point of views. I loved Meg, the one who was described in the uh, beginning of the book a lot more just because, you know, she is the one who's... Um, really like just she's doing a lot you know she's doing a lot and it's exciting to follow along with her so on my rating scale I am giving this an enjoyable read um I originally rated it a four and a half star and then as it like sat with me a little bit after I read the book I was like there were just some things that I was a little annoyed with and wished that we had more closure with so um, I ended up giving it a four star, which is still like really good in my books. Um, but yeah, I am going to get chatting um, with spoilers for those of us who have read. So if you're new here, I would love if you could hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new bookish related video. But we are about to get chatting. 
Okay, so I actually am looking at my typed notes from when I did the book club that I mentioned. Um, so in part one, I was just basically shocked that Meg was able to like manipulate that entire relationship with Corey. Um, like she knew she was going to screw him over and she also knew he was like most likely a pedophile based off of everything he did um, and like that background story with that Kristen girl from her high school. And I was like, who willingly like gets involved with like a predator? Like, why would you do that? You know, but her point of view was like, she knew this sounds so gross, but like she knew what he liked and she knew that, you know, eventually like, um, when she started like catfishing as like a younger girl that like he would go on a date with her. And I don't know, it was just, I wasn't expecting that. In part two, um, I literally split up the book. Like I always take the page number and then I divide it by how many days um, I wanted to read this. So me and my friends read this over four days. Um, so I can't quite remember the exact page number, but I think it was a little after like a hundred. Um, we were just talking about how like you knew Nate was like a shitty guy, right? Because he said those comments to Corey about like when he was first introduced to um, Meg, how he was like, oh, like she's a student, like you're living the fantasy, huh? Or something like, meaning he knew that like Corey like preyed on students and he was still friends with him. And then we also get that little piece of like Kat essentially blaming Meg for like introducing her to Nate, which like I get, like Meg knew that Nate was a shitty guy and she still like, you know, made Kat and Nate like meet up. Granted, do we think that, did she know that Nate was going to drug Kat? Probably not, but in Kat's head, she was like, you know, why would you even put this like terrible person in my life, like knowing that he could, potentially cause me harm. So like, I totally understand her point of view. That being said, part of why this was a four star read for me and not higher was because I wish that that was brought up like at the end of the book. Like I wish there was a scene or an opportunity for Kat to confront Meg and be like, listen, like I literally was drugged and raped from a guy that you put in my life knowing that he was a shitty person. And like that conversation never happened. And I was pretty upset about that because I felt like that that whole situation really kind of like, how do I word it? It really made Kat's character, like her vengeance and her, you know, desire to get back at Meg was because Meg screwed her over and introduced her to Nate. And now they like never got to have that conversation. I did think Meg was behind the missing bank statements. I didn't think that Scott was going to be gambling again. And I was actually confused when that, like when she found out what email it was that was like tied to the banks, it was something like, um, someone's niece or whatever like it would have been something that Meg also knew but I remember thinking like that's a really weird um thing for Scott to do like I don't know he just ended up being like a shitty character as well I'm not gonna lie I am not gonna lie I loved the scene where Meg slammed on her brakes so Scott would purposely rear end her because she like wanted to put her foot down and be like stop following me it just was it was just such a Meg move. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up all of my thoughts on uh, The Lies I Tell. So I did really like it. I wish there were some like pieces, you know, that ended up, you know, being put back together, so to speak. But anyways, please leave in the comments what you thought about the book. Please indicate if you are going to talk about spoilers, just so it doesn't uh, ruin it for any potential readers. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, you guys.